I remember going to my very first Snacks Bow in Atlanta. There was a very large cocktail party, and I remember walking in, and there had to be 3,000 people. And I looked around, and I thought, I don't know anyone. Thanks to Snack International for this honor, and thanks so much to everyone in the industry, my colleagues at Reading Bakery Systems, and all the folks who helped make this special moment possible for me. I can't believe I've been chosen for the Circle of Honor Award. Snack International provides a forum for industry leaders to get together and trade ideas and talk about their approaches. That in itself is incredibly helpful. You might have the smartest designs, but if no one else knows it, you're going to starve to death in that position. Terry has always been the guy with the big idea. When the top person in the company can drive the innovation of the company, you're a better company for that. If you had a problem with your equipment and he didn't have a technical person available, he would do it himself. He was on what we called the A-team. Terry's a great leader. He understands the vision, the direction we want to head. He supports that. How you doing? Good, how are you? Welding away back oh, there? Oh, Brian. Attaboy. <laughs> I was just looking to see what kind of a rig you, you got set up here. Terry's the type of person who walked into a room and matter who was in the room. Terry knew how to make everybody in that room comfortable and be a part of the team. I graduated from high school in 1964 and went on to Lafayette College. At the time, it was the height of the Vietnam War, so I decided to take the ROTC program. They offered a flight program within the ROTC program. I decided that that would probably be the best thing for me. I graduated number one out of 3,000, so it allowed me to pick my field. That's how I got into the Army's flight program. I can remember being a kid plowing a field and watching airplanes that were practicing aerobatics over my head for the Reading Air Show. I must have been 12. As soon as I saw that, I said, that's what I want to do. I served in Germany and was a company commander in Vietnam. After 13 months, came home and I got a job with Chemical Bank in New York. So I had just been elected an officer of the bank. I was finally getting somewhere in New York, and my dad called me and said he has a chance to buy Reading Bakery Systems, and would I come and help him? You know, your dad calls and you, you go. So I came back to Reading, where I was the number six employee of this little tiny business. Reading Pretzel Machinery was the name that my father had picked. My dad, unfortunately, had a, had a heart attack and had to stop work. So I became president at age 33, and probably 80% of the pretzels in the United States at that time were being produced on some form of our machinery. So we couldn't grow any farther if we stayed solely in pretzels. I would go to a convention of biscuit cookie and cracker bakers with the name Reading Pretzel Machinery, but by and large, no one would talk to me about machinery because they thought I'm the pretzel guy. So as soon as we changed our name to Reading Bakery Systems, everything changed. Over the years, we really evolved into a system supplier where people come to us for products and are not as interested in the details of the machinery as they are the process. Terry really pulled us through that. Our push into international markets has definitely been a key to where Terry has been able to take this company. We were doing a job in China in 1986, before everybody was doing business in China. Terry understood process and he understood what a good product was. He wasn't afraid to tell somebody, you're not doing such a good job making this pretzel, let me tell you why. He believed in science and where science met the art of baking. People looked at baking as an art. No one was exactly sure why certain things turned out. It was their secret formula that did it. So I started to investigate what caused certain things to happen in the baking process. What makes certain flavor compounds develop? What causes them to degrade? The effects of heat transfer in products? All of that has an influence on machine design. We worked on that stuff every day. 
Every day there's something happening at the Technical Center that was instructive and capable to reinforce what we were doing in the field. We created what we call the reference installation. You had to prove that you could do what you said you could do. We bought an airplane so that we could haul people out to these remote places so we could show them the equipment and show it in operation. Some people might think it's crazy, a company uh, of, of our size in those days having an airplane at their disposal. He used to always joke that uh, he was in business to support his aviation habit, but what it did was allow us to respond to our customers' needs. That ability was priceless, especially for building a small company into a larger company. Terry was responsible for all of us and let us know that. The very first time I went, I was sitting in the back and I could see part of his head in the cockpit. I'm sure he knew I was a little bit nervous and he just kind of gave me a wink and went like this and I thought, I'm fine, everything's good. For myself, being a pilot gave us a real competitive advantage. I can remember dropping off technicians in Pittsburgh, going on to meetings in Indiana, turning around, coming back, picking up the, the technicians, and we're all home sleeping in our own beds at night. People looked at that and said, wow, here's a company with capability. The stone facade out there was the first building, the initial building. After that is the first edition, then the second edition, then the third edition, which is really pure evidence that I'm not a very good planner. Being the son of an inventor, my father was always trying to improve something. There was always a better way to do it, and I sort of followed that. We had to reinvent the company to move it from pretzels to bakery because things changed. I think that disruption, while it is unsettling to you as a leader, is also an opportunity. And I think that the way we view disruption is that it's okay, it is, we accept it, now what can we do about it? In flying the airplane, there's a checklist. The checklist always is a delineation of a process. If you fail to follow the process, in an airplane, that's called disaster. In a business, what you have to be able to do as a leader is when you go to bed at night, you've got to know that the process is out there working. Terry was a mentor to me. We go back you know, 30 years and I really appreciate everything that he's done for the Redding family here. We were very fortunate to work under him for so many years, not just in business problems, but also life challenges. He's just kind of a father figure to us. I think it's important to remember that Terry has been involved in Snack International for a long time and the contributions he's made to the industry and to the organization itself for so many years and bringing us up along behind him, I think it's critically important. I can't think of anybody in the industry more deserving of this award than Mr. Groff.